Oh, Professor Farnham to see you, Mum. Oh? Ask him to come in, Alma. Hello, Mrs. Pryor. Did I disturb you? I hope not, but I had a sudden impulse to look in and see how you were. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Oh, do you mind if I have a drink? Thank you. You know, I had a talk with that Burke fellow today after you left, and a fascinating thing came up. Did he tell you? Tell me what? About Dora Evans. She actually existed. Oh, a long time ago. And it seems that she, um, she killed her husband. With, of all things, a pair of pruning shears. That's rather poor taste at a time like this, don't you think? You mean you didn't know about it? Professor Farnham, unless there's some reason for this conversation... My dear Mrs. Pryor, I have decided to uh, cut myself in. Cut yourself in? On what? Let's not pretend anymore, Mrs. Pryor. You need me. I beg you. Please don't argue with me, Mrs. Pryor. I'm the hypnotist, remember? It's my profession. Now, a little judicious searching through any good library, I'm sure most anyone could have come up with a Dora Evans. Ah, but so few would conceive the brilliance of using it as a peg on which to hang a murder. That's a monstrous accusation. But it would be perfect, wouldn't it? I'm the one person who can uphold your story. With my sworn statement, this would never get beyond the coroner's inquest. Without it, my dear Mrs. Pryor, I'm afraid you might find yourself in one of those sordid tabloid trials. Alma. Alma! Professor Farnham is leaving. Now get out of my house. Get out of my house! All right, please. This coroner's board of Hennepin County is now in session. The clerk will enter the opening data. Green board is now in session to determine death, cause, and circumstances of said Will Pryor, killed October 13th, 1958, as residence in Glen Mallow Hill. Dr. Malcolm Atterbury, examining physician. Death certificate signed 1.45 a.m. morning of October 13th, 1958. Uh, Mr. Farnham, this is key testimony you're giving here since we're dealing in a uh, somewhat mystical area and you being an accredited, what is this here, meta... Metaphysician. Thank you, metaphysician. Now, this transference, as you refer to it, this exchange of body and spirit with Dora Evans, is that a possibility? Not only a possibility, gentlemen, a fact. I can cite a dozen other instances, such as the one that Mrs. Pryor went through. It was a transitive exchange with a person long deceased. Glenn, if you don't mind, I'd like to question the witness. Well, that's your prerogative. Mr. Farnham, I'd like you to tell the coroner's board something about this vast experience you've had. Specifically, the year 1938, Nassau County, New York. I have here a police report of an indictment against a Miles John Farnham in May of that year on the charges of fraud and malpractice. It wasn't proven. I was exonerated. The whole thing was a mistake. I will prove that Mr. Farnham, or Professor Farnham, as he likes to call himself, is not an accredited hypnotist, and that Mrs. Lucy Pryor was not in a state of hypnosis at the time of the stabbing of her husband. That's not true. She was under hypnosis. I verified that. But we have only your word. And I submit these police reports on the character of this man's word. I disacknowledge his claims of professionalism. And I ask that this case be brought before People's Court for grand jury trial. I object to his inference. What does he mean I'm not accredited? It's an inexact science. We don't carry graduation diplomas about in our hip pockets. This lady was under hypnosis. If you don't believe me, if anyone has any doubts, with Mrs. Pryor's permission, I'll prove it to you right here and now. Well, I, I hardly think that Mrs. Pryor... No, I don't mind, Mr. Garson. Where do you want me, Professor? In that chair, please. Would you raise your veil? May I please have complete silence? 
Now, you remember the light in the living room? Yes. I want you to concentrate on this light. Soft, steady light. Warm and glowing. Floating in space. Free of this room. Free as you are free. You and the light and the sound of my voice. Can you hear my voice? Yes. You're going back in time now. Years are slipping by. What is your name? My name is Dora Evans. And it please thee, sir. My garden is there by the elder trees. And just here is my rose arbor. It was there I made my decision. I took me stealthy to the house. I submit this lady is in deep hypnosis. You can have her examined by any doctor you may choose to verify this. I guarantee she is not accountable for any act she performs in this condition. She's under the direct control of the spirit of Dora Evans, the spirit of a woman dead for over 100 years. I came up behind him and... Somebody get a doctor, quickly! Hurry up, there's one on the lower floor. End of a pretty good case against Mrs. Lucy Pryor. Come on, darling, just try not to think. We'll get you home and into bed right away. George, get the car, will you? All right. Darling, sit there quietly. I'll only be a moment. Oh, Mr. Burt, would you keep an eye on her? I'm going across the street and get some smelling salts. Certainly. Thank you. May I have a drink of water? Downstairs, dear. Mrs. Pryor. There's no one anywhere near us. I have no recording devices. No one can ever verify what you say at this moment. You're free now. Free of me and the courts. So just to satisfy my curiosity, did you plan the whole thing? Wouldst not thee like to know? <laughs> 